Welcome back boys and girls. This video seems a little funny to say happy sunshine and you'll understand why. This is about another facet of the larger deception that's going on around us and that facet is our weather, our rain, our snow, tornadoes, hurricanes, are they really natural? Well, August 25th, 1127 p.m. Pacific Time. I want to first start off by showing you a search return. If you put in Owning the Weather by 2025 into a search engine, you're going to come up with a PDF file and a whole bunch of other sites that are talking about this PDF file and you'll find this file in, in many places. This is not a secret by any stretch of the imagination. And when you open up the file you'll see that it's a research paper presented to the Air Force 2025. Colonel Tamsey J. House, Lieutenant Colonel James B. Near Jr., Lieutenant Colonel William B. Shields, Major Ronald J. Celentano, Major David M. Husband, Major Ann E. Mercer, Major James E. Pugh, August of 1996. This is 21 years ago, guys. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven decently advanced people in the armed forces came together to write a research paper. And it's all. <laughs> <clears throat> it's all about modifying the weather. Here's their executive summary. In 2025, U.S. aerospace forces can quote-unquote own the weather by capitalizing on emerging technologies and focusing development of those technologies to warfighting applications. Such a capability offers the warfighter tools to shape the battlescape in ways never before possible. It provides opportunities to impact operations across the full spectrum of conflict and is pertinent to all possible futures. The purpose of this paper is to outline a strategy for the use of a future weather modification system to achieve military objectives rather than to provide a detailed technical roadmap. A high-risk, high-reward endeavor, weather modification offers a dilemma not unlike the splitting of an atom. While some segments of society will always be reluctant to examine controversial issues such as weather modification, the tremendous military capabilities that could result from this field are ignored at our own peril. From enhancing friendly operations or disrupting those of the enemy via small-scale tailoring of natural weather patterns to complete dominance of global communications and counterspace control, weather modification offers the warfighter a wide range of possible options to defeat or coerce an adversary. Some of the potential capabilities a weather modification system could provide to a warfighting commander in chief, abbreviated CINC or SINC, are listed in Table 1. Technology advancements in five major areas are necessary for an integrated weather modification capability. 1. Advanced nonlinear modeling techniques. 2. Computational capability. 3. Information gathering and transmission. 4. A global sensor array. And 5. Weather intervention techniques. Some intervention tools exist today. Look at that. 
Some intervention tools exist today back in August of 1996 and others may be developed and refined in the future. So then they go into more details about uh, Oh, I'm trying to zoom out here. There we go. Whoa. So, the reason that I find this all interesting is because my father is part of, well, basically the shadow government. Here's his resume. It's online. This is just available for anybody to see. I just did a Google search or a duck duck go if you want to be technical and I just can't believe that all of this is is out there I, I want you to to see where he started his career <clears throat> um, Air Force Weapons Laboratory in Kirtland Air Force Base he was the group chief and then a project officer uh, he found an unsuspected phenomena or right down here uh, intensity mapped aberration and started a new group uh, to manage it, supervised one to two professionals. Uh, so, you know, he made a discovery and they, they gave him resources to uh, look into it further. And I'm pretty sure that based on this discovery is why DARPA picked him up. And if you've done any research around rabbit holes, uh, that's going to perk your ears up. <clears throat> My father was a program manager for uh, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. And this was from 1975 to 1980. His boss at DARPA at the time he was working was a guy by the name of Arden Bement. Now you guys can go look it up, but Arden Bement <clears throat> was appointed to the director of the National Institutes of Standards and Technology uh, shortly after the World Trade Centers came down. And <clears throat> Isn't it interesting that an old director of DARPA was appointed to the head of NIST right at the time when NIST was uh, charged with writing the official report and investigation into uh, why the trade centers came down. And so my family, my family is very close to the deep powers that are keeping the deception in place. I don't like the way that feels. And we can see that uh, after DARPA in 1980, he finished out his career in the Air Force. Uh, look at this, he was in the Air Force Office of Scientific Research. Pretty much from 1980, he was a program manager. In 83, he was the deputy director. And then he was the acting director of Electronic and Material Sciences Directorate at the Air Force Office of Scientific Research. And that was till 1985. Then he got promoted to Project Forecast 2. But you know, We've seen a lot of play on words in some of these other areas we're investigating, especially the Heather Ann Tucci case with uh, A. Brush and Parker Still. It's just weird stuff. And, you know, the military, they, they have their own logic for why they name projects what they name them. And <clears throat> when I look up Project Forecast 2, it's basically an overarching project that the sole goal of Project Forecast 2 was to coordinate and organize all of the other projects that the Air Force had. 
And so my father was a strategic technology planner for that project forecast too, for a year. And then he got moved to Air Force Systems Command at headquarters for the project forecast research manager. And then he retired from the Air Force. He went into the private sector defense industry. This man is wickedly brilliant. His education, he's got a PhD in engineering. He's got a master's in nuclear physics. He's got a bachelor's degree in physics and a bachelor's degree in German. And so I put all this together. My dad worked at DARPA. Arden Bement was his boss. Arden Bement was confirmed as the 12th NIST director. President Bush, well, this is the National Science Foundation, but President Bush uh, uh, tapped Arden Bement to be the director of NIST. Like, I had dinner with this guy. My mom cooked for this guy. He, he sat in my living room. <clears throat> I remember one summer, actually two summers, <clears throat> we had a business trip. <clears throat> they call it temporary duty or TDY. And we went out to California. This was when my dad was working at DARPA. And I remember having... Uh, a late night dinner on the beach and a campfire with Arden Bement. And I can't remember who else of his family was there, maybe his wife at the time. But you know, we've got, we've got this document here and then we've got some interesting things popping up, you know, Hurricane Katrina. How many hurricanes do we have to add that have had very suspicious paths? Yeah, I really, I also want to point out that Dutch Sense does some excellent work in researching weather modification. Uh, just listen to this for a little bit, guys. It went for the radar. Every single one of these formed and went to the radar. And we issued the warning for each location two days out down to the point. Dallas, you're going to get hit by a tornado within two days. 48 hours is what I said. And I said 100% chance. On each location, they said it was impossible that each location would be hit. And then each location got hit, including Rose Hill, Kansas. Wait, we just keep on going, guys. This is all in the same day. Guess how many people died in these storms, guys? Hundreds of people killed. This means the National Weather Service is directly or indirectly responsible. Either manslaughter or if they're knowledgeable, then the people are responsible for the death of hundreds of people. Babies. Dutch Sense is an amazing investigator. You guys should really check him out. He's got a web page here. Uh, and here's HARP and weather modification information. And it's really interesting, uh, some, of this, some of this man's phraseology. Um, want to know about weather modification, HARP, VLF, high frequency, and chemtrails. Want to prove it to a non-believer? Here you go. I mean, the same way I've been operating from the foundational observational facts that we can gather and glean, that's what Dutch Sense does. And 
he's proven to me that tornadoes are man-made events. How crazy is that, guys? But it's not that far of a stretch for me. I mean, I've had dinner with the sitting director of DARPA. My dad worked for Air Force, and he was on Project Forecast 2, right here. And what gets forecast? The weather. The weather gets forecast. Speaking of forecasting, did you know that earthquakes can be forecast too? Dutch Sense has watched them move around, uh, move around the earth and he can tell which way the pressure's going. And he has got these little arrows that he has put in himself over the imagery of the Earthquake 3D app. And he is amazingly accurate. It appears that there's also some relationship uh, between the sun and earthquakes. He's talked about that in some of his videos. He's got He's got so many videos, I, I, it, and they're all just chock full of solid observations. And so we have Hurricane Harvey here. <clears throat> I'm going to mute that. This, this is from Weather Wars 101. And you guys should really check this guy out, too. This is just solid observations. He really doesn't do any talking. Uh, but he just lets the, the pictures and images speak for themselves. And he kind of paints an idea. But without language so much. Uh, and I think that's translatable to, to more people in more countries. So I'm going to let this play. And there we go. And while that's playing, I want to read to you something that a friend of mine in Texas wrote. He's just an internet acquaintance, I should say. But he's in Houston, and Hurricane Harvey is, uh, well, it's bearing down. <clears throat> and so this is, this is what he was writing earlier today. I was glad to hear my friend, also in Houston, had experienced the same odd lack of chemtrailing I've seen for a while now. Because it's nice. It was a very particularly clear day on the eclipse. I had mentioned it before, but it was one of those days where when you walked outside, you could just sense and feel that crystal clear sunlight and skies. I now wonder how much they've been using this to steer and even simply create this weather system because the effects wrap all the way southeast past Mexico and all the way to northeastern Canada and beyond. This thing is already out of control and while I typically never watch the news, once again since the eclipse I've turned into local media and it's just insane. They're saying it's a severe hurricane coming in, and the most recent estimate of rainfall I just saw in the news was over a few-day period, quoting, is 25 to 33 inches. And I'm not making that up. I was joking with my 10-year-old with my earlier in the day that let's see if the rain amounts to 33, and there it was on the news. No particular reason I can see. It was the first I'd heard the number 33 mentioned, whereas before it was averaging 20 to 50 inches, which is obviously catastrophic. That's the word they keep using. Beyond that, they're estimating an average of 6 to 8 inches a day until Thursday, with averages that may surpass 50 inches total over a very wide swath of land from early Saturday a.m. to Thursday. Heavy flooding, days, long power outages, days long. The whole quote-unquote nine. NOAA, 
openly stated they are not aware of such a storm before, and it will be absolutely catastrophic in nature. As an aside, I saw uh, a blurb that it was uh, the storm of a thousand years. All right, so continuing here from Houston, they have already brought in and activated the National Guard and Army troops into Texas. They're also pushing this constant narrative to not listen to individuals' social media as it will be and has been incorrect. Message control? Question mark? The head of emergency management actually held a long press conference to address that sole issue. I stopped by a local Walmart today, which I really try to avoid, avoid entirely, to grab some extra supplies, and of course it was mostly emptied out. Thing was, FEMA was there with a full table set up, paperwork, and workers. Are they agents? Law enforcement officers? They were in plain clothes. I suppose they were told to dress like a Walmart worker because each of them had on simple, clean, and absolutely matching dark blue collared shirt and dark slacks, but with no identification. And it was obvious to me that even the shirts were new and of the same fabric. They made it quite clear they did not work there, but were definitely working in some manner. It was a bit of a situation where it was likely some type of government workers who didn't want to be ID'd from what I could tell otherwise. They'd have obvious ID or at least a name tag. They were all younger men, perhaps even military in my experience, but all in a certain uniform. Anyhow, since this very well might be related to chemtrailing, and the recent eclipse. I'll post updates here if y'all want. Though I have a large power generator, I'm expecting to lose all internet access by late Saturday, as I doubt the primary node that runs internet access will function without power despite my capability of being able to run a router modem and computers. I've already got my radios in order, though I only currently have access to rubber ducky style antennas where range is limited. Cell phone service is expected to go down almost immediately. I'll be curious to see if my satellite radios function. And if not, why? Anyhow, I'll keep you all updated. So, then I got uh, another little blurb update. I've got to say, if you don't believe the weather is owned, this is literally a level four hurricane, five being the highest, moving at nine miles per hour as of now. And, well, I'm not sure how to decipher this time code here, but this was, this was today, this evening. So the hurricane's only moving at nine miles an hour, guys. So he's experienced four to six inches of rain in just one day, but they're saying that it's anywhere from 30 to 50 inches of rain from now until Thursday. A ton of tornado warnings. What's so odd is, this storm is expected to make full inland landfall, then turn and go back out to the ocean, then sweep the city of Houston. I am extremely concerned here, as literally no one knows what's going to happen, even at the top levels of government. As like they're saying, this has literally never happened before. Per their recorded data and projections, power is already starting to go out to the tune of nearly 20,000 people. And the storm technically hasn't even made landfall. They said this surpasses all storms back to 1968 as far as location, speed, path, and water drop down. Just doing the best we can, but I suspect my power is going down tonight as that is when the storm is making landfall as a cate Category 4 hurricane, 1 a.m. local time. By the way, NASA took a few images, images of it from quote-unquote space. And they do look fairly le legitimate, but I suspect high altitude planes. 
After all of those Eclipse jets, they finally released a 30 second clip and that was all. But bragged and said it was broadcast live. We all know that's not true. Hopefully talk to you all soon. Might be up to 10 days without power, I'm told. I do have a generator, but it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to run it full time due to fuel usage. So, I just wanted to put weather modification on your map of deception if it's not already there. If you've got any love, lighter links in this matter or any of the other ones I'm talking about on my channel, please send them to lunacy, L-U-N-A-S-E-E, -E, at protonmail.com. Let's hold a positive vibration and make some affirmations to Grace. That's what I named the universe. I named her Grace. And Grace listens to affirmations. And if we affirm that the people in Houston are safe, then I'm sure she'll take care of us. All right, lots of love to you guys. Peace out.